It's 4.30 now on BBC Radio Cornwall and the Cornish poet and novelist DM Thomas celebrates his 80th birthday next week and he'll spend the evening at Waterstones in Truro reading from his 14th novel. I asked him why he's decided to do that. I thought, well, let's do something unusual but also something that I like doing. I I love reading my own work and the work of others and um, so I'm going to be at Waterstones reading from my new novel, it's the first for 14 years, called Hunters in the Snow. And um, the doors are open at 7 o'clock, so if people are interested, do come along. Especially if they want to wish you a happy birthday. Uh, yes, it, uh, exactly. It, it, it's also um, Holocaust Day. I'm not sure how I feel about that, but it's a kind of triple thing because actually this novel is indirectly to do with that in that it's, it's about... Vienna in 1912, just before the First World War, when a young man called Hitler was living there, and also the Freuds were living there. And I imagine in my novel that they meet and form a sort of relationship. And this is, in fact, very, very possible, because um, Hitler was at the time an indigent mediocre artist trying to sell little postcards on the streets of Vienna and Freud and his daughter Anna always took a walk around there and they would have passed each other and that seemed to me kind of extraordinary that that one of the the great humanists of the century um, would have passed many times one of the most evil men of the 20th century and I, I kind of toyed with that idea and played with it. it took me years and years to write this novel it's quite short but you know, a, a lot of time and effort went into it. I couldn't get it right. And, of course, it isn't right now. No no, no novel is ever right, but um, it's as good as I could make it. And as you said, your first novel for 14 years. It, yeah. Did you find this one particularly difficult to write, or was it just you didn't want to, to write any over that time? No, I, I, I have been writing uh, a lot of poetry in the meantime because I... Um, kind of like to be an all-rounder in authorship i write a lot of poetry i've written i think 13 collections of poems and now 14 novels and a biography of solzhenitsyn a couple of memoirs of my my own but the main reason it's taken so long is that um probably my brain is less active than it used to be and i used to come out like a novel a year but i can't do that anymore but i was still determined to stick at it and finish it but there have been lots of books of poems in between Because, as you said, it it took you a long time to write Hunters in the Snow, your your latest novel. I read something about you that you never used to reread your novels, and 2010, I think, you actually went back and read some of your novels. Yeah, uh, I would find people um, quoting from a novel, and I'd I'd entirely forgotten it. And um, there's something... I like to read a novel when it first comes out, you know, when it's first published then it feels like a book and I I feel quite proud of it. But then after that, I don't want to look at it because I'm on with the next thing. Uh, For me, always the, the the next book, the next poem, the next page is, is what is important. And just before you, you came to my home today, in fact, I was toying with a poem on the screen, um, which hopefully will make a collection later this year. You know, I, I thank God that I still have, um, have that creative zest, which I first had, I suppose, at, well, 13, 14, and... Um, Touch wood, I've still got it. I may not be as good as I was, but who knows, you know. I mean, that's for the future to judge. And when you reread some of those novels, I think you found fault with your own work, didn't you? Oh, absolutely, yes. I, there, there are three or four I'm pretty ashamed of. Um, but there were also probably half a dozen that I thought, um, thought were OK, were really pretty good, yeah. And we're talking about your 80th birthday, and it's also kind of the 40th anniversary of you starting to write novels, because up until you were about 40, you only wrote poems, didn't you? That's right, yes. I had a um, a very demanding teaching job. I was a lecturer in in English, and um, poems 
when you're working hard on another job uh, are, are easier to write. They take them, obviously, much shorter time. But then suddenly the college where I taught in Hereford was closed down and I decided to become freelance, try my hand at writing. And as our students were year by year disappearing from this uh, college which I'd loved, um, I felt uh, my friends were leaving for other jobs i felt i've got to make friends i've got to make new friends okay i thought i'll write a novel and make friends who will be my characters and um, and that's when when i got into novel writing and first of all i thought i'll just write one but then i had an idea for a second and then my third novel, White Hotel, which came out in 1981, was very successful. I mean, it took me aback, and um, it's been published in 30 languages and uh, won various prizes. It was so also that, shortlisted for the Booker Prize, wasn't it? It was shortlisted for it, and in fact, um, the, the judges wanted to split the prize between me and Salman Rushdie for Midnight's Children. And unfortunately, they were told by the board of Booker that this wasn't in the rules. So that was a great shame. How disappointing. And the very next year, they changed the rules, but they've never split it uh, since then. But they changed the rules. Maddening, maddening. That could have been you, couldn't it? Do you often think how would things have been different had, had you won it? Um, yes, at the time... Um, the White Hotel was doing so well that I didn't worry too much about it. But, of course, later on it would have been a cachet. You could talk about it. But, you know, the tide moves on and there's no point in thinking about that too much. It did win other prizes. The Los Angeles Times Fiction Prize, for example. So, um, yeah, I, I've been very, very lucky on the whole. I was very lucky that at that time when I no longer had a steady income that I wrote a book that, that did bring, at the time, uh, a lot of money in and has kind of cushioned me for later years when it's much scarcer, as it were. Now, clearly, you love to write, mm. but what's it like to be recognised by other people for your writing, you know, in a way, when you're, when you're shortlisted for a prize or you win an award? It, it was a very strange experience because I'd had 20 years of publishing poetry and with some success, um, although um, not t terribly well known. But then suddenly, for a while, a, a sort of uh, uh, a celebrity figure I mean, uh, for, for a few years it was strange. Uh, I can't say it wasn't enjoyable because, um, well, everyone likes recognition and I've been writing a long time. But you have to to learn not to let it go to your head, which I certainly didn't. Again, because I was thinking of the next book, you know, and not um, too worried about living it up and living the, the high life. I was still beavering away with my typewriter then and uh, most of the time... I'm just on my own. That's one of the, I suppose, in a way, drawbacks of being a writer. It's a very lonely occupation. You know, you're sitting in one room with your thoughts hour after hour after hour. So then it was nice suddenly to perhaps go to America and they brought me over by Concord to do... Really? Tour. Yeah. I had four trips on Concord, which was rather good. Very enjoyable. And, um, uh, of course... Very quickly after the White Hotel came out, it was um, it was optioned as a film, and that was well about 1983. It still hasn't been made. Well, would <laughs> you like had, to see it made? I, well, I would. It's had the most extraordinary um, misadventures along the way, almost being made, and then, for example, once was going to be made in the old Yugoslavia or Serbia with the whole Serbian army as extras, but then suddenly NATO attacked Serbia, so that fell through. And then an um, incredible number of people died who were associated with it. So it, it, it's had a sort of a curse of Tutankhamun on the film, but but uh, it's still it's still ready to be made sometimes. The film rights actually re revert to me in May, so who knows then? Who will come along and say... We'll make you this offer and we'll make that film. 
So could I say maybe you're open to offers from May? <laughs> I'm open to offers. Any would-be filmmakers in Cornwall who are listening to this, yeah, give, give me a bell. <laughs> <laughs> well, you never know, do you? He's got that film option, as he said in May. DM Thomas talking to me ahead of the launch of his latest novel, Hunters in the Snow, and it is happening on his 80th birthday next Tuesday. And you can hear more from him next week on the programme, including about his love of Cornwall. Now, if you would like to go to that event, it's Waterstones in Truro next Tuesday, the 27th of January at 7 o'clock. And everyone is welcome to the event. If you want more details, you can give Waterstones a call on 01872 22 